Giro Empire SLX, a shoe with laces. It's been around for a few seasons now, but it's gradually grown acceptance among the roadie crowd with pros like Bradley Wiggins and Taylor Finney and amateurs alike. I've had this shoe for half a year now. I've already spoke about it in another video, but I really liked it, so I thought it deserved its own review. First thing you're gonna notice when you pick up a pair of Empire SLXs is, is the weight. They're very, very light. This shoe in a size 45, and that's with a Shimano cleat, shim, hardware, is 251 grams. So when you consider other high-end shoes weigh more than that, and they cost more, and that's without cleats, it just goes to show how light this shoe really is. So if you're a weight weenie, if you're into hills, pretty good shoe for that. Of course, the low weight doesn't mean anything if you're gonna have loads of flex in the carbon sole, so that's where they're gonna save weight. Luckily, this sole is a Eastern EC90 sole, so there's a tiny bit of flex in it, but hardly anything at all, and if it's good enough for guys like Taylor Finney, big powerful guy, then it's gonna be good enough for nearly anyone. So on to the fit of the shoe. The Empire SLX comes with two soles. It comes with a super light footbed with perforated holes all the way along, but that doesn't have any arch support on it. The other sole, it doesn't have the holes. It's marginally heavier, but we're talking only a couple of grams. But then you get three different types of arch support. You get high, medium, and low. All those soles and features come in the box, so you can, you can play around with them till your heart's content to find kind of which which one suits you the best. Another cool feature I found on the shoe, and one I wasn't expecting on such a lightweight shoe, is that the heel cup actually has quite a lot of padding. Quite often on these super light shoes, they often skimp on the heel, so they're very, very firm, very thin, without much of a kind of contour to keep that heel secure. But this Giro, that is pretty thick there. And again, it's got a really nice edge running around the inside that you can hook your heel into, so it's a very, very secure shoe. Now onto the kind of elephant in the room, the laces. Do they work? I found basically they work really well. There's a bit of kind of the first couple of times you use them, you have to, you just have to learn how kind of tight you pull them. Maybe the first time I found I pulled them really tight, tied them up, set off, and I found they got a bit kind of, feet got a bit hot and sore after a few minutes. So you kind of learn the point that you feel is comfortable for you, but they're really adjustable and you get a really even pressure all the way along the shoe. So it's, it's a really nice secure fit and whether you're sprinting, climbing, endurance rider, it, you know, it's gonna work really well for you. The laces sit really neatly under a little hook just there. One slight problem I have found with the laces, the more I've used the shoe, is that they've stretched over time. So that once you've tied them in a knot and they slide down under that hook, the laces have been gradually getting further and further and further down till they're almost hanging off the edge of the uh, laces just there. They're not so long as to catch on anything yet, but I could see someone that had a very narrow foot and if you had to kind of crank it really tight, you might find you want a shorter pair of laces or just to kind of, I've seen some people that wrap the lace underneath the shoe as well to combat that problem. This lace stretch doesn't occur while you're riding, it's kind of a thing over time, so I never found that the shoe got looser during the ride. I've never suffered with uncomfortably hot feet while I've been riding in the summer, winter, no matter what, so I find it difficult to make a comment on the ventilation. There's a few holes that run down it. There's a little vent there, um, so they seem to me to be plenty cool enough. Again, you see a lot of pros using them in incredibly hot races like the Tour of California, racing in Spain and stuff like that, so I think it's, they're plenty well ventilated enough for most people. Another thing I really, really like about these shoes, and again, you don't find it as much these days on super high end shoes, which I think is a bit of a crime, is the fact that the heel bumper is replaceable, keeping your shoes on the road for a load, load of time. Longer. These also came with a spare set of white laces, so once your nice black ones are worn out, you can go super bling and replace them with white laces. One slight problem I have found with this shoe is that and it's not as apparent on these as it is on some colleagues' shoes who, who's had them for a lot longer, is that the, the outer isn't the most robust. It's very easy to clean because it's shiny, but 
it picks, picks up scratches very easily. You start walking around with them, you start knocking them on your crank arm, you have a crash, anything like that, and it's gonna tear that to shreds. So it's, it's not the most durable outer, but I think that's kind of, if, if the shoe's gonna weigh as, as little as it does weigh, I think that's a price you're probably gonna have to pay. More durable shoes are gonna be heavier because normally they have a bit of, bit of plastic or a bit of harder rubber that can run around the toe and the heel of the shoe. So for me, these are probably some of the best road shoes I've ever ridden in. Um, once these wear out, I'd, I'd definitely consider buying another pair. Giro Empire SLX, a shoe with laces. It's been around for a few seasons now, but it's gradually grown acceptance among the roadie crowd with pros like Bradley Wiggins and Taylor Finney and amateurs alike. I've had this shoe for half a year now. I've already spoke about it in another video, but I really liked it, so I thought it deserved its own review. First thing you're gonna notice when you 